Hi there. My name is Daryl Urbanski, and I'm going to be speaking on the Online Prosperity Show. And you should come listen to my talk to hear me talk about the eight critical business habits fiscally proven to, for any economy. These are eight critical success factors I discovered after spending $50,000 going through all the research from all, all the different academic journals, plus over 17 years of working with different businesses and hundreds of different industries and helping people make anything from their first dollar to a first million dollars. So you definitely want to check it out, see what I got inside and figure out which of these eight critical success factors are holding you back so you can fix it and finally reach your full potential. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I brought you none other than Dario. Dario, how are you doing, my man? I'm good, my friend. It's an honor and pleasure to be here. This is the third time I tried to make this happen, and third time's the charm, so I'm excited. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Even in tennis, they counted in threes, right? So that's <laughs> how we hope this is going to be um, uh, a good one. Now, for those that are tuning in for the first time, Daryl is best known for his ability to create seven-figure automated income streams from scratch. And after repeating this success with multiple clients, he's actually set on a mission to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners. And how is he going to be doing this? By evidence-based methods and accountability. Today, we're going to be finding out how he is doing this and what he's got so far, especially when it comes to evidence-based methods that he has spent time uh, studying and bringing the best um, ways to create habits within business people. Now, Daryl, tell us a little bit about how you got started and what exactly you are um, hoping to create with all of this. Sure. So you mean like back when I was first getting into business or? Yeah. So how, how you first got started in business and then what it is that you're working on currently. For sure. Okay. Well, back in the day, um, I think in the earliest days I'd worked I think it started, I got a job, one of my first jobs at a call center. We were doing, selling tickets to the circus to raise funds for the police. I remember something to do with that. And I remember one day I showed up to work to find out that uh, they were closing our office, that we hadn't met our quota and all that. And they were, they had more than one office and this one was getting closed down. And at that time, I remember I really hated it because I was, you know, I was just kind of new and trying to figure it out. I've been there only a couple of weeks, I think. But um, I never wanted to be the last person to find out again. I kind of committed at that point that I wanted to be the person at like the source, the spring. If it was like a hot spring coming out of a well, like uh, the side of the mountain, like I wanted to go to the source from that point on. So I would be the first to know or one of the first to know and never the last. And then later on, I mean, I'm still in high school when this is going on. Uh, I did a co-op with a company called marketme.ca who was partnered with a company called bizbound.ca. Uh, they're not around, I don't think anymore, but marketme was just a local marketing agency and bizbound.ca was part of a government sponsored kind of entrepreneurship training thing. And I was 17 at the time and I got to see inside, I was working with the chamber of commerce in Kingston and just nothing, nothing the, the Kingston, what, Kedco, Kingston Economic Development Corp. That was it. Um, anyways, nothing, like I just got to see the inner workings really of that. And that kind of first alluded me to some of the principles. And I just love the idea. And even when I was a kid, um, I was adopted. And in my adopted family, my, my uncles, we go visit him in Toronto. And I always felt like he was the godfather because when we go visit, he'd have, he, he had, he had retired from, he was a cameraman at uh, like a major network and he retired and started getting into property management. And he was really involved in his community and all the properties were around where he lived in Toronto. So people were always coming to his house and like bringing gifts and thanking him because he would always go above and beyond and help people. And he would fix them with little things. He was like the guy that would help the old lady across the street or spend the extra hour at her house to make sure the door doesn't stick because she can't open it. And I just love that. And he really embodied me with the idea that businesses are there to serve communities and people. And so that was originally like my first impression, like, wow, he's getting all this acknowledgement and respect and has a really nice lifestyle and he's doing it by helping people. And that's kind of was the, the beginning, you could say the spark of wanting me to lead down this path of entrepreneurship. Um, I mean, I don't know how much of my story you want me to go into, but um, we can fast forward to today. I mean, 
I, I went to Japan for a few years. I was freelance in Japan, teaching English and doing consulting work. And I worked with Johnson and Johnson and Tokyo Electron. And I did all sorts of stuff. I did team building, corporate team building. I remember we got to take a bunch of executives out to play paintball. And I remember like laughing to myself. I was like, I'm getting paid 60 bucks an hour to shoot people with a paintball gun. I was like, this is, this is excellent. Like, you know, I love my life. Um, you know, I did, but I've, I've, I've done a lot of different things. I did, um, I've done some franchises, uh, shoveled driveways. I've done all those kinds of things and always trying to figure like, what is it? Like, why are some successful and not successful? And it kind of the pinnacle, I guess, where this kind of becomes real is when I came back from Japan, actually, um, I had been training jujitsu at, at Hicks and Gracie's school in Tokyo. And at that school, for people that don't know, in jujitsu, it's typically eight to 10 years to get your black belt. A lot of arts, it's like three, four years, but jujitsu, it's 10 to, 10 to 12 years to get your black belt. And at this school I would go to, I think I was paying like $80 a month and I would have a black belt instructor, but it was such a highly prestige school. It was such a prestigious school, sorry, that in the class, there would always be a black belt and a brown belt, which were the top two belts, like as students in it. And then when I went back to Canada, my hometown, and this is no, uh, I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody, but it was a blue belt, which is the, like the first belt you get after your starting belt, your white blue. And he was trying to charge $150 a month. Now he had been a black belt and had a black, like a karate school for a bunch of years. But in my mind, I'm like, you're still just a blue belt in this art and I'm going to pay you double. And the training partners are all newbie white belts. And so I just started my own rec club near the military base. And I ran that for a while. And at some point, I'm skipping lots of details. I decided to take this rec club and, and make it a business. And so I launched it. And I ended up growing this to a six-figure business. I had four instructors, a couple of sales reps, and I ran it for three years. And I was reinvesting everything that I was learning into uh, like figuring this out, right? Like in my education, reading the books, going to the conferences, paying for the overpriced coaching and mastermind groups and that you're paying... $1,600 a month for a couple of calls, you know, with a, with a guru, which can be very valuable. Um, and one of the things that I noticed though, is that a lot of my friends that had businesses in my hometown were starting to have success too, because I would come back from this stuff and I would talk to them and, and they would get inspired and they would come to me with their problems. And one of the things that I love most, again, going back to with my uncle was the success story, like helping people. And when I had my martial arts school, one of the things that I loved the most was the stories people would tell me. Like, oh, I've, I've lost weight. I feel better. This girl got attacked by some guy at a nightclub. She was able to defend herself and get away. One of my students, he was an alcoholic. I, had, I knew him for years, small town, right? He'd always struggled with drinking and he managed to kick the habit. He was, came in, he's like, my wife's proud of me. My kids are proud of me. My parents are proud of me. And I love that so much. And one of the guys that I was closest to, he was running a satellite office for uh, a company out of Ottawa, a multi-million dollar company out of Ottawa. And he came down and he goes, Daryl, I've been promoted to CEO of the company. Uh, it was called Ottawa Kiosk. And um, I was like, Corey, that's great. He goes, no, you don't, you don't understand. I've never been CEO. I have no idea what I'm doing. I was just like regurgitating some of the ideas and things that we had talked about. And he wanted to pay me, put me on a retainer to be his consultant. And uh, that's when I thought about realizing, because I knew his business, I knew that they had thousands of customers. And I had a martial arts school and I had, you know, like 150 members or whatever. But I was like, wow, with Corey, I'll actually be able to influence and connect with thousands of businesses because they serve a B2B market. And I realized that every business represents a few hundred people. And I saw an opportunity for exponential impact on the world. And that's when I really thought maybe I would want to get into actually doing more coaching. I mean, you know, I've applied this stuff and it worked. And uh, I'd actually launched uh, uh, like a called traveltrainjapan.com. Domain doesn't there anymore, but you can see the video, the promo video maybe still on YouTube. And I took some people to Japan for 30 days to do kind of like a tour of all my favorite things that I did the three years I lived there. We climbed Mount Fuji. We went to Kyoto. We actually volunteered and got to go behind the scenes and meet Hicks and Gracie because there was an annual tournament he would put on in Japan. So I did like a martial arts tour thing. And before I leave, that's when Corey called me. I was leaving in the flight two days. Daryl, I'm got promoted. Congrats, Corey. No, no, you don't understand. I'm going to hire you and you're going to show up to these calls and just, you know, just listen in and be my advisor. 
And I was like, well, I'm, I'm leaving for a month and two days. I'll, we'll talk about it when I get back. And I thought about it on the plane right there and back. When I got back in about 60 days or less, I wrote three books. I, I, uh, I call them business books for busy people. And each was on a, a different like focus. One was Ancient Secrets of Lead Generation, Your Primitive Business Guide to Better Leads with Less Effort. And I put these three up on Amazon, self-published, and one of them, Ancient Secrets, started to gain traction. So practicing what I preach, I marketed it, and I managed to get it to hit number one on Amazon for the top 100 in marketing and sales. And I used that to get on local television and radio and, and all sorts of stuff. And I ended up putting together a business coaching group. And then again, skipping lots of details, I ended up getting connected with uh, John Asaraf from the movie The Secret. He had made a lot of money with Remax and um, had then gotten into some other businesses. And long story short, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. He, he offered me a very substantial salary, a, a percent of everything I helped him make if I would close things down in Canada and go work with him. And I, at the time, I was still, like, I think I just hit 30. I was maybe 30, 31. And I was still just really trying to like flex my muscle and learn and, and invest in myself. And I wanted to get out of the small town that I was in. And so I accepted it and I went down there. And uh, what I didn't know when I got there, and I don't know, John may or may not be comfortable with me telling this, but sales were down. We'll just say he paid me a, a, a signing bonus, a very generous signing bonus. But when I got there, everything was very intense. And I remember being like, John, why are things so intense? Like you've built all these multi-million dollar companies and all this, like what's going on? And this is when I realized that sales alone don't guarantee business success because John is a very famous person. He's very capable and he could do promotions and generate sales, but things, there were other things going on that were causing issues. And he told me, Daryl, you know, uh, and remember I had this nice little martial arts school that was running. I, the problem is it's not, there's no universities churning out jujitsu black belts. And it wasn't really a destination. People, no one wants to move to a small town of a hundred thousand people. Or, you know, so it wasn't really a sellable business. So I had to cancel contracts and pay some people back to go and do this with John. But he told me, hey, if we don't do some, you know, if we don't fix this problem, we don't, don't do uh, like over $100,000 in sales, we're going to have to let everybody go by Christmas. And, and um, so that's when I talked to John. We came up with a plan. We ended up doing $250,000 in sales, I think, in November. And then we launched uh, an online automated funnel because uh, the company was on the verge of bankruptcy. And so we did the 250,000 and then we did this online funnel. And then with that, we did about $300,000. And I took that, which I had automated and done all these tests around. And the final version, it was just 500 bucks in Facebook ads. I ended up helping scale that to doing about $100,000 in sales per week. We did 1.6 million in eight months, $3 million as a company as a whole. And that kicked off the beginning of, a really great career, so to speak. Fantastic. Take a breath. Wow, that's a big, um, you know, journey right there. And at the end of the day, you really highlighted a lot of uh, points. You know, you know the list of which, um, you know, that sales alone don't actually guarantee business success. You know, there's a lot of research that has been going around that says that less than twenty percent of new businesses survive in their first. Yeah, and fewer than 25% of those survive the, um, you know, past the 10 year mark, um, you know, especially when maybe there's global uh, recessions or market downturns. What, why is it that so many people are failing, even though they are seemingly looking like um, they are a success, you know, in the public sphere? Yeah, so I was really surprised by that because after working with John, I went on and helped others and I've helped other people do hundreds of thousands and millions in sales. And it was very surprising to me because if you take a look, like Blockbuster is a great example. This company did, was a multi-billion, forget million, a B, billion dollar. They were doing like $4 billion a year. They could have hired any talent. They could have developed any technology. They actually had an opportunity to buy Netflix and they didn't. And then Netflix ended up running them into the ground and making them go bankrupt, right? Enron was another company that posted 101 billion. Like these numbers are so big. It's like monopoly money at this point. It's like a bazillion trillion million dollars. He posted 101 billion dollars as profit one year and the next year we're bankrupt. So the re the answer is, is that there's a lot of ways business can go sideways. And you know, money is to a business what gas is to a jet. You can't go anywhere without it, right? 
But having an abundance of gasoline isn't going to guarantee you get to your destination safely. It's not going to guarantee that you get there faster. It's There's a lot of other variables that are involved. So uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, I was already on this endeavor to figure out why were some people I were helping having great success and not others. And at first I thought it was like a personal productivity thing and like, like a motivation thing. And, and I thought that's what it was. And I had some theories and my theories were mostly proven correct. But what I didn't expect was how deep it went. What I meant is there was a whole, there was all these other areas I hadn't even considered. So at the beginning of the pandemic, when I saw everything that was going on, I was in a luxurious position that I took some time off to kind of watch and, you know, the great resignation and all these people laid off and pausing their jobs. And I knew there would be a bunch of career changes and I knew there would be sharks in the water. And so I spent $50,000 to hire seven research teams to help me go through all the scientific literature. Everyone was arguing about the science. I grew up in a house of physics and geology and astrology, like, like hard, hard, uh, astronomy and hard sciences. And so I wanted to know, so we went anyway, so we hired these people to go through it. We, what we found was that there are eight critical success factors. There are eight factors. So what we did is we looked at hundreds and thousands of studies. And if people don't know, a meta-analysis or a systemic review is when someone takes a collection, hundred thousand of studies done on a specific topic and they summarize the findings of all these studies. So we set out to do a systemic review of meta-analyses. We wanted to do a review of all the summary. And be, we pulled from different countries. We pulled from Dubai, from Thailand, from America, from Australia, all these different countries to try and figure out what they were. And then we tried to figure out what were the big umbrella topics underneath them all. And again, we came up with the critical eight success factors. And those are self-efficacy, market intelligence, strategic planning, marketing strategy, sales strategy and skills, money management, business operating systems, and business intelligence. So these are, like we call them the critical eight. And they're things that people need to look at habitually. So like in Blockbuster's case, they had money, they had sales, but their strategy and their market intelligence were off. Uh, newspaper subscriptions used to be considered rivers of gold, right? But then blogs came out and they got decimated. And it's because they lost touch with the market and they had a terrible strategy and they were completely detached from what the market wanted. And so a lot of when they did, and this is what a lot of business owners go through, to get back to your point, they like, most of the newspapers died, right? The ones that survived were the, either the ones that had financial backing survived long enough until somebody figured out what to do and they copied them or they figured out what to do. Everybody else got decimated. 80% of the papers got decimated, uh, if not more. And that's again, because they lost touch with the market. They thought they were delivering stories wrapped in advertising, you know? Um, so those are the eight critical success factors. Now there is a ninth factor that we found and that was government and economic factors. But one of the things that we discovered is it doesn't matter if the economy is good or bad. It doesn't matter if the government is hostile or friendly. It can definitely make your life harder, but the only thing you can do as a business owner is focus on those eight critical success factors. And you have to, then we drilled down into each of them. We figured out that there's things that you have to do habitually, that there's a, there's a rhythm to some of these things that are in place. Am I, am I, am I, is this good? Oops. Absolutely. Okay. And um, obviously, with all these findings, you've created your signature program, which is the Happy Hero, um, which obviously I must congratulate you because it's the only science begged, begged uh, program of its kind that is just designed to give people these eight, um, um, you know, habits and mindsets all in one. Tell us a little bit about this program and why do people actually need it? Right. So. So the Happy Hero program is where we've taken this research because a lot of people are like, and you know, they say, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him to fish, feed him for life. And we try to do both. So what I mean is, you know, there's eight critical success factors. I told you what they are, but ultimately at the end of the day, you, you're, you're, most people are going to be kind of fumbling around in the dark, trying to figure out what it means and figure out like, what, what do I do with this info? And that's where a lot of us are reading books, going to conferences. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle we're trying to put together in our heads. 
So this program has broken it down where all you need to do is log in and follow the program. And we help you. It's business, fitness, and mindset all in one. And week by week, we just introduce different things. And we like, hey, our habit this week, like we start off real simple with a gratitude journal. Why? Because the first thing you got to do is actually do the program. If you don't do the program, you're not going to get the results. So we make it really easy. We want you to associate positive things with it. Let's get your mindset right. If you're running a race and your mind gives up, your body will not carry you the distance, right? That's why we love like those grit and the underdog when they're like down, they've been beat up and they manage to stand up and then win the fight because they meant that mental fortitude. We love that. And so we help develop that. And, and all of this is science-based. And then week by week, we stack the habits and then we rotate focus so you don't forget anything. Because again, even these big companies like Blockbuster, they forgot to focus on some things. They forgot to pay attention to certain stuff. So this program really just gives it to people on a silver platter. So they literally have to just sign up, do the program, log in. And we've had some members that are actually saying, like one of the things we do, people don't realize if you want to get paid daily, it probably means you need to generate leads daily. And one of our earliest members, uh, Jack, he was like, Daryl, I hate that lead form because we said, how many new leads do you have today? He's like, every time I put a zero in there, it pisses me off and I go find a lead. And he's like, I'm growing my business because I hate putting that in there. And we even have a leaderboard and stuff. So um, that's really what it is because I've done it. I've paid tens of thousands of dollars for coaching consulting and the advice can be very helpful. But then you have to take that advice, translate it in what it means that you should be doing and how it applies to you and your business. And we've done that. We've tried to make this a universal thing because if someone's selling airplanes and someone else is selling hot dogs, how do they how do they coax each other on and cheer each other on, right? Like two different worlds, but they both can generate leads daily. They both can work on different things. Like people want to talk about productivity uh, and time management, but nobody really talks about energy management and health is a really important part of this. If you can only run one mile before you're gassed and you just, I need to lay down and take a nap, then that is your energy gas tank you bring to every day. That is how resilient you are to stress. Like at, at, like it's almost like a, like a temperature thermometer. Like once the pressure gets to that level, you're now overwhelmed, right? And you need to take a break. But if I could snap my fingers and now you can run 10 miles, and not be fatigued like that. You have 10 times more energy. And there's there's all, all, like, I could just list the laundry list, less sick days, you're more productive, you're more focused, you're more emotionally resilient, you have better mental fortitude, you have a stronger ability to focus, like all this stuff fits in. So, you know, a lot of people, they sacrifice their health, to try to build the business. And then so, a lot of people might lose the business because they're going to lose their health or whatever. They can't focus on the business because now they got to focus on that. So we try to give people a structured approach to have it all. Oh, absolutely. I, I value what you're doing there because for one thing, you can't do well if you don't feel well. And a lot of people are always uh, wanting to um, maybe change their financial si uh, situation, but they're not actually generating leads. And that's the reason why here at Live Long Digital, we always guarantee that we can generate hundreds of qualified leads for you like clockwork. So you never have to rely on either cold calling, emailing, just to beg clients to, to hire you. Now, obviously, Daryl, this sounds, um, you know, very interesting for somebody who's maybe getting started in business. Can somebody who's already, um, you know, having a business and already doing well, you know, join this or is it is it important for somebody to 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 join this even if they're already well into their business years for sure because we always get stuck and there's also one of the things i'd say is not everything in the jungle kills you and eats you some things are just parasites and this can take a lot of different forms it can be as simple as a social media addiction that's not serving you and actually is detrimental to your mental health it can be staff that are not productive. So one of the first things we talk about is self-efficacy, right? That that's one of the eight critical success factors. And if you have people on your team that aren't effective, sales staff, marketing team. So we've talked to some people about putting their actual whole departments on this program because anybody that's got their finger on the pulse of the company and everybody in most companies, like again, this, people don't realize this, but most everybody in the company should be working for sales. If not to make a sale, to keep the sale. Right. A lot of people think this is a bit of a, a cliche quote, but a lot of people think you you get a customer to make a sale, but that's the, it's backwards. You get a sale to, or you make a sale to get a customer. If a sale is a golden egg, a customer is the goose who lays them. 
like like business and this is another reason why people fail is because they have short-term thinking they're just trying to get sales but no what you want to do is find people you can serve long term so you can get multiple sales from them not just a one-time hit and run it's not a business is not a series of one night stands right it's a it's a marriage it's a long-term relationship hopefully in a you know helping people solve a specific problem so even as a business that's existing if they're just trying to get unstuck um, if they're just trying to, if they're finding that they have a lack of focus, either the business owner or the, the team in the business, um, trying to overcome issues of, of, of procrastination, trying to avoid, because again, a lot of business owners, um, it's tough to sell, a, a, it's tough to sell prevention, but you know, nobody expected COVID. And then when COVID hit, all of a sudden it came down to what are the essentials real quick. And one of the things I find is that often with a lot of the business owners that I work with, when they're struggling, there's typically a fundamental that's missing. And that's the other thing that makes this program valuable is that well, not only did we do the research, we found ways to measure people's performance in each of the eight factors. So we can actually test you and figure out where you're weak and then specifically tell you how and where to fix it. Oh, fantastic. Now, how do people get access to this Habit Hero program there, Dario? Right. Well, because we want to take good care of people, it's not open all the time. So they can go to bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, bestbusinesscoach.ca, and maybe join the waiting list if it's available. We open and close membership because we want to make sure that people are onboarded properly. We want to make sure that they're set up for success. And so it is a limited time thing. And every time we do this, we actually keep increasing the price. So I'm not sure when they're going to see this, but it would be to just go to to bestbusinesscoach.ca. They can look me up as well, Daryl Urbanski. Uh, I'm on, you know, we're all on all the social platforms uh, and follow the rabbit hole that way. And um, if you can get in, try it. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this right now, you can know you can appreciate that Daryl has created this habit, um, you know, uh, program which is designed to be your daily companion, and it is done you know, in your own spare time, either at your home or in your actual office. So Habit Hero actually helps you boost your sales, keep your customers longer, and actually improve your health while getting better night's sleep. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Because if you can fix all your day-to-day -day habits in, you know, eight easy steps or just by doing what you're already doing, but making sure that the ha habits stick and you're also using evidence-based research in the process that will be something that I'll definitely jump onto. Now, Daryl, one last question before we actually let you go. Somebody might think, oh, you know what? I'm already pretty busy. Um, do you know what I mean? And I'm already doing most of the things that you're talking about. I'm already subscribed to a lot of all the coaches. I'm reading all the books that are on the bestseller list. Do I um, really need to be doing this? Oh, I don't have time for this. What what, what will be the one yeah. thing you can tell somebody um, who is on so, off that mindset? Well, so here's here's a couple of things. So one is when you're not working, your competitors are to kick your butt. And what a lot of people don't realize is if your business is using computers, your competition isn't just your local area, unless you're like a dentist or a local based business. You compete against everybody with a computer laptop and internet connection and even if you're like an immigration lawyer anybody that's done the training right because it's a professional service you do need a certain degree of training education so um one of the best things you need to do is make sure you're focused on the right thing things it's 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 race and the winners get it all and the losers get none and so how do you know you're not working on the on the right things you mentioned something here get a better night's sleep this is something there's a like a grind culture like wow well, grind it out over anybody and i used to be one of those guys i used to get like four four and a half hours sleep a night first off if you're getting less than six hours sleep a night your risk of death you're you are four times more likely to be dead in five years than anybody else the other thing is like truck drivers they are required by law to get a certain amount of rest for hours on the road and it's because without proper sleep you actually act and make decisions as if you were drunk. It is the same as being drunk, not having good sleep. So if you took every day, 365 days a year, and you stack drunken business decision-making on top of each other, right? And you, and you compound that over a year, two years, three years, versus making the best decisions every day, focusing on the things that matter the most, right? At the right time, in the right order, proven by science, 
where are you going to be? I mean, you have two guys and two guys that want to win a gold medal. One is in a garage with his buddies and they're going to figure it out with some DVDs and some books. And they're going to do a couple phone calls, phone an expert every now and then versus somebody else. They can hire an actual coach that won a gold medal that will hold their hand and make sure that their whole training program is focused on the things that matter most. Both have the potential to get a gold medal. Who's going to have an easier go, right? The guy's figuring it out on their own in the garage, or the one that's got the proven advice, step-by-step, step, take him to gold. That's what I would say. And it's not something that extra you should, you're going to have to add on. It's stuff you should already be doing. Like if someone's like, oh, I don't have time. You don't have time to make sure your customers are happy. You, you don't have time to make sales. You don't have time to fix your sales and marketing here. If you, if you, even if your sales and marketing are working, but your team can only handle five clients, more sales and marketing is not going to fix the problem with your clients. Jim Rohn had this great quote. He said, if you have someone going in the wrong direction, they don't need motivation because then all you have is a motivated idiot. What they need is an education to point them in the right direction. And then even if they're moving slow, at least they're going to get there eventually. And so again, why would someone do this program is because they don't know if they're just a motivated idiot. They're doing six things a day and they don't know if three of them are focused on what they need to be doing. And the other three is just mental masturbation. And so that's kind of what I say, you know, and if you don't do it, your competitor might do it. And then you'll find out later and you'll just kick yourself if you missed it. Absolutely. I really appreciate your time today. And if you're watching this, this is an opportunity for you to really look at how you can start creating diverse recurring revenue streams and you can actually skyrocket your profitability, ensure that your business remains 100% bulletproof, even during market downturns, even during global pandemics and any lockdowns that might come about, um, you know, because of what we're going through these days and habit hero, as Daryl has says, it actually uses statistically proven methods and habit creation to actually help you achieve more one week at a time. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Daryl, I thank you so much for the time that you spent with us on the show today. Yeah, thank you. It's been an honor and pleasure to be here. Fantastic.